What is up everyone? Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a application that a subscriber sent me. So he sent me his GitHub repo link and he asked if I could explain how to add authentication on React routes. So if you are familiar with React Router, you know, you typically have routes defined, which I could probably show you over here. So in this case, he has a login route. He has a register route and then he also has a secret route which is not supposed to load unless you're logged in. And I have the code working to prevent that. But he wanted to understand, like, how do I prevent a route such as secret from ever being displayed to the user unless they've logged in successfully? So that is what I'm going to be covering in this video. And that is something that is interesting to you. Be sure to stick around. So I already have the client and the server running on this laptop here. But what I wanted to kind of point out is that this front end is just a normal create react app. And he added a couple of, you know, pages using react router. So if I go to the app JS, I first noticed that he had basically without this, this is what his code kind of looked like. And he wanted to make sure that this secret endpoint was secured. So in order to achieve that, I had to add a lot of different things to his code to get it to work. But I'm going to kind of walk you through from a top level approach what had to be added to get this endpoint secured. So let me first show you what happens beforehand. So if I went to secret, it would show a page. And again, what we're trying to do is we don't want that page to display to someone who's not logged in. So it'd be nice if someone when they try to go to slash secret and instead redirected them to a login page and forced them to log in. So that is what I'm going to show you. So in app.js, what I basically did is I went to the router which you know is right here, browser router. And I wrapped this secret component with a verify authenticated component. So all this verified authentication or authenticated component does is it basically grabs something from the Redux store and checks if it's true or not. So in this case, we are checking is something called token on the store. And if it is, what we do is we basically show the children of that parent component. Otherwise, we are going to mount a component called redirect, which comes from React Router DOM, which is basically just going to redirect the user to a different page. So that's exactly what's happening here. If I go to secret over here, it is going to redirect me back to login. So hopefully this part makes sense for you. Um, let's talk about the Redux store. So in order to get this working, I had to store the token inside a store. Okay. So I added a store.js file over here. And I went ahead and set this up for you all. So the initial state is just an empty object that has a token in it. And I have a single hard coded string called set token, which you can use for your dispatching your actions. And in order to use Redux, you need a reducer. And you also need to kind of set up your store over here. If you want more information about how to set up Redux, I do have a tutorial video, which I will link in this description. I'm just kind of give you a high level overview and it's up to you to learn more about Redux if you want to take this further. But I pretty much created a reducer that whenever someone sends a set token event, I'm just going to set that token into my Redux store. Okay, and so like where is this set token event actually used? Well, if I go to the login component, after the user logs in here, so there's a request to a backend, we get the token back, which is request.data.token. And then we dispatch an action using Redux. So here I say type is set token and the payload is token. Okay. So then going back to the store, that's going to hit the switch, sca switch statement and basically just set the store up. So let's actually see what's going on here. I have a, a plugin installed in my Chrome browser so that when I type in login, you'll notice that uh, it's probably hidden. You'll notice that my state has a token in it now. Before the state had token equal null, but now it actually has a JWT token and we can actually inspect that. If I go to like uh, JWT.io and paste that in, you'll see that it has a unique ID in it. So this is his JWT token and that is what we're storing in our state. Cool. So let me uh, minimize that because I think that hopefully drove the point home. And then the second thing I added is on the actual, all right, so after you log in, we set the token. And then finally I said, change the URL to slash secret. Okay, so in, let me um, share two things that I had to import in this file. The first thing I imported was the 
use dispatch function. So this is a hook that's provided from React Redux, which you can call up here in your functional component to get a dispatch function. And this is used for dispatching your actions. And then we also have history, right? So history comes from use history hook. That's provided from React Router DOM again. And you can use this to kind of change your URLs dynamically. So after you successfully set the token in your store, I change the user's browser to go to slash secret. And that is what we see after we log in. So if I click log in here, we get redirected. And that's about it. And again, if I were to refresh the page and try to go to secret, it redirects me because if you notice here in the state, token is set to null. And that is basically all I had to change to get this working. Um, I did have to go in and add some more code. So when after you register again, I wanted to dispatch an, an action to say set the token. And you should probably do a history.push of like your secret here. Uh, what is it called? Slash secret. So after you log in or register, you usually want to redirect the user to a different page. And that would be useful to add here. But I didn't do that because I'm just trying to focus on the main thing which was how do you authenticate a route? And this is basically how you do it. Assuming that you have a token stored somewhere, whether you use app context or you used um, uh, prop drilling with state or you use Redux like we're using here, you basically just need to have a component that can grab that from your store and check if the token is set or not. And that's about it. So I hope this was a good overview for the original person who asked this question on my channel. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. I can do another video like this, but I will publish this video and I hope this helps you understand how to add authentication to your React routes. And I look forward to hearing from you. So, all right. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Hope you have a great day. This is a web dev junkie video. And if you have any comments or questions, concerns with more ideas that I could work on, put them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel. All right. Happy coding.